planet Earth. We began to use the Earth's resources thousands of years ago. Now our planet's population has grown to seven billion. Land and water are increasingly scarce. Shortage of water, pressure on fertile lands for cultivation and grazing, and demand for firewood. These are just some of the challenges faced by rural people worldwide. Desertification affects one and a half billion people. Climate change and extreme weather events degrade our environment and lead to human disasters and poverty. However, it's not only the climate that creates drought and floods. Disasters are also triggered by people not managing their lands well. Yet around the globe, we encounter innovative farmers who develop climate-smart land management practices. The Tajik fruit farmer Iskandar Mizoev created an island, a small paradise in a badly degraded environment, and manages to cope with dry years. If there's a lot of sun in spring, for instance one month of hot and dry weather, trees will drop flowers and not produce a lot of fruit. So I told my son to do two to three different grafts on the same tree. If one variety doesn't produce, the other one will. This and this are completely different. In the name of God, we have four different kinds of pears here. This is my own research station. Iskandar also protects his lands from heavy storms. On the other side of the valley, trees are planted far away from each other, so the soil falls apart. On our side, tree roots are closer to each other, so they hold the soil. We've planted trees to stop erosion and fill up the gully, and for firewood. This is what prevents soil erosion and flooding. In drylands, the maintenance of good vegetation cover is crucial. This is a particular challenge in areas where energy resources are scarce. Where firewood is used for cooking and heating, trees and bushes are disappearing. In Tajikistan, Momachol Alikhanova installed an energy-saving stove to reduce pressure on resources. Before we cooked our food with three to four dung cakes, now we use only one to one and a half and can use the rest as organic fertilizer. Where we used manure, you see the soil is rich, soft and fine, good for growing potatoes. Where we didn't apply manure, the soil is hard and much drier. Here the soil is hard and clumpy. You can't get yield from this. Another land use challenge is grazing. Worldwide, overgrazing accounts for 43% of degraded land. In Tajikistan, Davlat Khan Sohurov, together with the local community, introduced rotational grazing and created water points to protect soil, water and vegetation. The water we see over there will flow for another month and then the springs will dry up. The creek will dry up. That's why we needed water points. The pasture land you see over there has been affected by erosion. We would like to improve it. One way is not to graze animals on that pasture so that grass and shrubs will start growing. This will reduce erosion. Due to rotational grazing, we have healthier and more animals, so we can sell them and use the money for the household. In Kenya, where Joseph Maina Karania lives, water is scarce. However, Joseph is getting a good yield by covering the soil with mulch. We don't get enough rain, so the little rain we have, we must use them nicely, so that we can get enough food, so we can help our children. Conservation agriculture covers the soil very well. It's completely protected and the rain goes in. If we remove this gently, we see the difference to the other soil. It has a lot of water. Compared to the other, it's very different. 
You see, this soil is hard and dry and dusty. You cannot get any food. But here, where it was covered, crops can get the water for a long time and you will get food. But here it will dry and you will get zero. Zero. Thank you. If people around the globe manage land in a sustainable way and share their experiences, resilience to climate change, drought and disaster can be built. National drought policies must promote sustainable land management to create greener land on our planet.